Welcome back to Project 128. Today we're going to be showing you how we make our wicking pots. And this is one of them that we have finished. And we'll go ahead and we'll tell you what we use and how we put this together. So the parts we're going to need for this project to do with the wicking buckets we have is we're going to need a bucket is the first thing. And we have these, they're about 12 gallon bucket. They're called a rope handle tub. And we found these at our local Walmart. And sometimes you can get them really cheap there if they're cracked or have a blemish on them. And we keep an eye out for those and pick those up whenever we can. You're going to need some four inch corrugated drain line. And we cut this to fit these tubs at 40 inches. And we're going to need a piece of PVC. We're using one inch PVC because we've had a lot of extra this from other projects. And so that's what we're using. But you could essentially use any size. This is what we're going to use for our fill. I like the one inch because with the nozzle for our hose, we could actually kind of stick the nozzle here if we want to uh, fill this up. We're going to need, this is called a three quarter inch barbed coupler. And we picked those up at our local hardware store. We have three quarter inch grommets. And we found, again, at a local hardware store, we found a three pack of these. And these are grommets where they have the split ring in the center so that you have one side of the grommet goes on the inner wall and the other side of the grommet goes on the outer wall. And that's what our drain line will go through uh, with using this barb connector. You're going to need a razor, utility razor, and that's just for cleaning up uh, when we put our drain line in. We're using a 3 16th drill bit. And what we're doing that for, we'll show you, we're gonna drill some holes in our PVC and in the side of our tub to hold our fill line in place. Make sure it doesn't get pulled out by mistake or knocked down. We have a 25 millimeter or a one inch hole saw, and that's going to be for our drain line. And of course, we're gonna have some zip ties. We're gonna need zip ties for holding on a few items. This is called our sediment shield. And you can buy these as uh, what they call sediment sock that slides over the four inch corrugated drain. We like this because it's a nice big long sheet and we can use it for other projects and we just find it's easier to work with for us. And then we also have some um, leftover shade cloth and we're going to be showing you how we're going to be using that in this project too. So those are the parts we need and we'll go ahead and we'll show you uh, this project how we've done it step by step. Okay, we have our corrugated drain line and we cut this again to 40 inches. And we're gonna take this and we're just gonna press it into the bottom of our tub. Now some people, what they like doing is you can see there's this V here. What we use is that's where our fill line is gonna go in here. Some people, they'll cut these a little bit longer and kind of cut them on an angle to fill that in. and. Uh, we just go ahead and we'll use a little bit of our shade cloth over this and then that sediment shield to keep any dirt or sand from getting in there. So that's how we're doing it so we don't have to sit here and play around with making diagonal or uh, funky cuts in our drain line. And we'll go ahead now and we're going to show you how we go ahead and we plug in our drain. Okay. We have our 25 uh, millimeter or one inch hole saw. And what we do is you could measure up from the outside approximately five and three quarter inches. And that's a good place for the drain line to be with this four inch um, pipe that we have. However, what we found is a lot easier is we go ahead and we just set it right on top of the, the pipe once it's sitting in here and we drill that through. And that way it's where we want it to be. We want it above there. So this becomes the reservoir for holding all of our water there. And then anything that comes up above that, goes out in the drain. The other thing we like doing is we like having our drain and our fill near each other. And the reason for that is, is as you're filling it, when it starts to overflow, you know it's full, it's right there. You don't have to look over the top or look to some other sides, you know they're right there together. So we'll go ahead and we'll show you is how we do our drain. So there you go, it's that quick. And we'll go ahead and now what we'll do is we'll use our utility razor and we're going to clean this up a little bit and then we'll show you how we put in the grommet. Okay, once we have this cleaned up just a little bit, we go ahead and we take our grommet. Again, this is a split grommet. So we want to push that in there so that the split, we have 
one side of the grommet on the inside wall and then the other side on the outside wall. And these actually just play with it just a little bit and they pop right in there. And you just have to move your finger around a little bit, make sure it's even on both sides. But there you go. And that's all there is to it. There are some other type of grommets. They call them like a top hat grommet and that, where you don't have the larger piece for the inside wall and they just slide through. Um, there's something that's a special order around us. So we went ahead and just went with the standard grommet that we found right off the shelf. That way it's something that we know we can get regularly and it's reasonably crossed for us. So I'll go ahead and take you and show you how we put the barb fitting in now to, for our drain line. Okay, this is how we make up the drain line. And we learned this by watching the Rob Bob videos um, that he has. He's from Australia and he's done a lot of things with wicking beds and the wicking buckets and tubs. And we learned a lot of what we're doing through watching his videos. And a uh, great idea he has that we've gone ahead and we're using, and it's working great for us, is we take our three quarter inch barbed coupling and we take an old piece of shade cloth that we have and we go ahead and it's about two inches wide, about six, eight inches long. We fold that in half and then we place that over one of the ends. We then do like an S shaped fold. We fold one end to the right, the other end to the left, and then just use two zip ties, cable ties to hold it in place. And you're gonna end up then with something that looks like this. And that way this is gonna be on the inside and that's gonna keep sand and dirt and other material from going inside and clogging the drain line up on you. So what we also do is down inside our tub, we put just a little bit of the O-ring lubrication on there. And that's the stuff that, uh, if you've seen some of our other videos, we showed you using on your different threads and that to keep them from getting gummed up. It's what we use with our pool equipment. And so put that little bit on there and that helps us slide in a lot easier. And we're just gonna take this and wait a little bit, push it through, and there you go. Once the water gets above this reservoir to this level here, it's gonna start overflowing for us and we know it's full. And in the case of rain, like here in central Florida, we get some uh, pretty torrential downpours. Last night we got several inches of rain and we came outside several of our wicking tubs. You could just see all that excess water that was in there just pouring out the drain line. So that's what it looks like from the inside. And if you go ahead and look, here's what we have on the outside and that's our drain. Okay, our fill line, again, we cut this because we want it to come up above our tub a couple inches. So we cut this at 20 inches. What we also did is we went ahead and we cut this on a 45 degree angle at the bottom. And that way, when this goes in and sits against the bottom, that allows the water to come through. And if there's anything there, kind of flush it out of the way. It allows us to not be clogged or pushed up against the bottom to keep the water from being able to go in there and fill up our reservoir. So then we take this and we're gonna put it inside here. What we do then is we go ahead and we use the pipe as a guide and we drill two holes, one on either side of it. And that's with a 3 16th inch drill bit. For those of you who are using the metric system, um, we'll go ahead and we'll put down below the, um, the dimensions, what things are in millimeters for you to help you out. But it's 3 16 And we're gonna drill two holes inside of the pipe. And that's gonna be for our zip tie. And the reason we like that, uh, Again, uh, this is an idea we got from Rob Bob, and what he says is so people, little fingers, don't pull it out. And we just like the idea, that's just it, is if somebody can accidentally pull it out, um, it doesn't get knocked out by anything, no critters or anything. We get the tree frogs that'll climb into these and all that. So it just um, you know, helps that uh, this doesn't come out accidentally. So once we get that through, this is a little bit of a, can be a little bit difficult here. You gotta play with it. Sometimes what we do is we bend the end a little bit Stick it through one side, and there you go. See, it comes through the other side. And put this in. Usually what I like doing too is, is making sure that the end that has the, the higher edge to it faces in. And it's just a personal preference. It really, I guess, doesn't matter, but it's just my personal preference. I just feel it helps the water to kind of go in and flow inside rather than hitting up against the side of the tub. So there you go. That holds our fill line in place. And then we can just go ahead and use our dikes here and there you go. Just trim the end off and that's all nice and neat.
Okay, next thing we do is we take our sediment shield and we're going to go ahead and we just kind of hold it out over the top. Just make sure it's longer than the top is. Just use a pair of scissors and we go ahead and we cut that. And you don't have to be real neat about this because as you see, once we get in there, we're just going to be tucking this in down the bottom. And this is just to prevent any sand or dirt from getting into our drain line. What we do then is we fold it in half. If you look inside, you'll see what we did is we took some of our old shade cloth material and we tucked it in and filled it in around the pipe. And that way it'll keep things from getting into that area where our fill pipe is located. We want to make sure we tuck this in around the sides. You can put it above your drain. You can put this below your drain. It really doesn't matter if you put it below your drain and like that. And we kind of tuck it down in here. If you need to use more than two pieces, go ahead. I mean, it's this stuff is um, pretty cheap, and I'd rather use a little bit more to make sure we don't get sand in there than to not use enough. And then that's just it is as we have sand get into our reservoir and clog it up, and then we have to take this apart. So And we just have the center area because when we fill this up with sand, we're going to have sand come down in here. And that's the area too where this will fill up with water. It'll go into the sand and it'll start wicking up into our uh, potting material that'll be on top. So that's all we do. Again, we don't care about how pretty it looks because we're just going to be dumping sand on top of this. And the purpose is to keep the sand from getting into our our reservoir for our water and that's it and we're going to go ahead and start next we'll show you how we put the sand and then fill in our dirt material on top of this okay what we do with the sand is we go ahead and we just pour our sand in and we go about an inch over top of our uh, pipe that we have in there and then after we pour our sand in what we do is we go ahead and we have sugarcane growing so we at the end of the season when we cut down our sugarcane we take the mulch and the leaves and we just go ahead and we'll use that as a material in between the sand and our potting soil. And so that's what we do there. And I'll go ahead and I'll show you what it looks like when we have all the, there we go. There's one there with the uh, getting ready to receive the soil. And then what we do, here's some blueberries that we have in one. And this is a finished one. We go ahead and we go ahead and we fill up um, the potting soil in there to the level we need it at. And then we go ahead and we add a little bit of pine straw. We have a whole area on our property full of pine trees. So we just take some of that pine straw and use that as a mulch topping. And then here's that cap. If we go ahead and we just pop that off and we can, when we need to check, we can look inside and we can see what our water level's at. Or we can go ahead and we can use our hose and just stick it in there and fill it up. And then again, there's our drain. That's right the side there so that we can actually see as we're filling up. We like keeping our drain and our fill right there in the vicinity of each other makes it easier to see. And so that's how our wicking pots are. And if you have any questions, go ahead and submit any questions you have. Go ahead and like us. We have a Facebook page. We have a, um, a blog web page. And again, comment or send suggestions or questions anytime. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Until then, happy gardening.